I'm trying to go public. I don't know why I'm unable to go public. Probably I'll be able to go public at the end of the session because I don't want to stop this. I'm already here. I don't want to stop it. So let's just continue to share and get as many people to join us. So how are you people doing today? Hello, 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 hello. How are you doing today? Please share. When when you see when you come on like that, share because there's joy in sharing. You know, the joy in sharing is not only when you have something to eat or money. Even in an opportunity like this or in a conversation like this where we can pick one or two things and learn one or two things, let us share. Let us share so that we can get many people to join us. We can hear from so many people and uh, we can hear from so many people, you know, and it's going to enrich us and we're going to gain more knowledge. So how are we doing? How are we doing? Thank you. Thank you. And Phyllis, how are you doing? Prudence, good evening, good evening, Prudence, good evening. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Oh my goodness. So I'm just going to move on because this is Lillian. As you know, my platform is the Ambos platform and this platform is for women. Particularly for women. This is a place where we discuss all our issues, women's issues. Because women have so many issues in society and sometimes they don't know where to talk about them. Because we don't have confidence in our friend and in our next friend. We don't know who to confide in. We don't know who to talk to. Sometimes we have these things weigh us down until we become depressed and even die with all of this. But this is a platform where we can share our difficulties, share our challenges, help one another with ideas and make this place a better place for all women. And until we become a force, until all women become a force, like one force, we are not going to overcome all the challenges that society has for us. You know, society is expecting too much from women. I always say that because I know that the society expects too much from women. The woman is supposed to be perfect. The woman is supposed to be an ideal. She's not supposed to make mistakes. She's supposed to be the best wife. She's supposed to be the most well-behaved person in society. She's supposed to be respectful. She's supposed to be the best mother. She's supposed to be everything in society. So the least thing that you do wrong, it becomes a taboo. It is viewed like a taboo. So this puts a lot of pressure on women. Whereas the men have the laxity to do whatever thing they want to do. And the simple excuse is, I'm sorry, is the work of the devil. And it's normal. Society accepts that. It's normal. But what I want us this evening to understand is that it is not normal. I don't want us to be overburdened because the society is expecting too much from us. I don't want that. I don't want you to kill yourself or to go out of your way to do things that you're not supposed to do because you want to please somebody. You cannot please everybody on planet Earth, no matter what you do. They are going to, they are going to be naysayers on your path. There are people who are going to talk about you. People who grumble behind your back. People who gossip you. People who laugh and mock at you. When you stay quiet, people say, look at that one. She's never talking. She sits behind as if she's scared of people. When you talk, look at that one. She's very pompous. Where everywhere they go, she wants that people should see her. When you make up, they say, oh, oh, see the way she's showing off. I don't even know what she thinks she is. When you dress simply, say, see that one. See the kind of clothes where you wear and come for public. When you come online to inspire somebody, they say, see, every day she's on social media. What does she want to show? Please let her go and sit in the house and respect her age. When you don't do something, people will talk. You do something, people will talk. But the one thing that you have to understand is that the only reason why they talk about you is because you are fruitful. You have something to give. Because nobody picks a stone and shoots on an empty tree or a fruitless tree. Nobody does that. But when you bear the best fruits, all the stones that are around you are going to be aimed at sh you shooting because there is something up there. So if people talk about you, it's because you have something. Something influential, not negative, positive. That's the reason why people talk about you. It's because you're important. That's why people talk about you. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to go out of your way to try to please people. Be you. Identify who you are. Identify who you are. 
and strive to be you. Just be the best version on you, of you. And do your best to try to be the best person that you can be. Be in competition with yourself and nobody else. Don't compare with anybody else. Be the best version. Every day you should strive to be a better version of who you were yesterday. And that's the only thing that matters. What people say about it does not matter. What people think about it does not matter. People's opinion about you has nothing to do with who you are. But until you define you and understand who you are, then are you able to carry on through these challenges? Because so many people get broken by these challenges. This is a very big challenge in society. People don't know how to handle situations when people talk about them. It wears some people out. It kills their zeal. It makes them to, to decide to retreat and be isolated and stop talking. You know, whereas they had something that if they came out there and maybe just talk, it would have been able to impact their life. So be encouraged as a woman, be impactful as a woman, be strong, be energetic, have self-confidence, build your self-worth so that you can be able to navigate through the challenges of today's world and to be able to be the woman that you were meant to be. So that is my introduction for today. So if you're here with me, please share. And when you share, you're going to be blessed, blessing somebody. So today, particularly what I want us to talk about is I want to talk about why women fail in their relationships. Let's talk about some relationship tips today. Why so many relationships? Why are there so many relationships failing nowadays? Why? Let's look at those things that help to destroy our relationships. We women, we have to understand that we are the foundation of a home. The man can use money to buy a house. But you cannot use money to buy a home. You are the foundation of that home. You are the pillar of that home. And there are certain things that you have to put in place if you want to make that place where you are living home. And you've got to put those things in place with wisdom. Because there are so many challenges that are going to come your way. From your husband, from your husband's family, from your friends, your husband's friends, everybody around you. So you have to be very smart. You have to be intelligent. And you have to be diplomatic to be able to navigate through those challenges. You have to have confidence in yourself to be able to navigate through those challenges. But then, what do you need to do to bring yourself to that place where you can overcome all the challenges without any difficulties. What do you need to do? Number one, some women are very, very nagging. You want to know where your husband is at every given moment. If you call his phone and he does not respond, it's a problem. The world will get loose. You want to control his phone at every given point in time when he comes home, you pick up his phone. You want to go through his phone. You want to see what are you looking for. So while your husband goes out there and is trying to fend for the family, you sit and you are imagining. You are creating a world, an imaginary world in your brain. Oh, am I even sure he's at work? Probably has gone to see one girl. How can I know? I'm going to control his phone when he's coming. In fact, let me even call him. And you call him, he doesn't answer. It's a problem. You know why? It's because you're idle. Women, we have to do something with ourselves. The moment we start appreciating who we are and appreciating the time that we have, 
we have to do something for ourselves. We have to get busy. Because believe you me, if you spend time trying to configure what you want to become, trying to realize your projects, when you spend time having a project and trying to strategize on how you can find a solution to that project, believe you me, you're not going to have time to be thinking about, oh, did my husband go to work today? Who can he be talking to today at work? Probably he's talking to his colleague. Uh, let him come here. You come and tell me if there's a female colleague in his office today. Let him come and tell me. You spend time doing things that are useless and at the same time destroying your own relationship. When your man comes back from work tired, exhausted, by the time he sits down, you come up with a problem. I called your phone today. Why did you not answer? Where were you? You cannot tell me that you were alone and you did not answer your phone. You cannot tell me that. That's how you leave this house every day, that you're going to work and you're going to be looking. You start creating problems that are not existing. Because you have already built that imagination in your, the world is already in your brain. And you believe that whatever thing that you're saying is true. Whereas probably that man was actually out there struggling to fend. And it is not, it, it is not a given, it is not a rule that any time that you call his phone, he must respond. He went to work. Can you understand that he could be busy? Can you understand that he could even be talking with a friend? Can you understand that he could be with his boss? Can you understand that he had an assignment that he was trying to finish? Why will you always put negative connotations into why your husband or your boyfriend did not pick up the phone? When we do that, we destroy our relationship. We actually destroy our relationship. When you become naggy, you know, you make the home uncomfortable for him. And sometimes you start putting ideas in his head. Your husband could have had a female colleague and maybe he had never even seen anything in that female colleague. He had never even noticed, like even develop an interest in that colleague. The moment you start nagging him, morning, afternoon, evening about that colleague, he's going to say, oh, maybe there's really something about this girl that my wife keeps talking about. And that's when he starts looking at her. And he starts seeing things that he was not seeing before. You actually pushed him. Thank you, Adeline. Thank you for joining. You actually pushed him into discovering that woman, into discovering the values or the assets that she's got. So can we learn to be appreciative and to be able to use our time effectively? Because they say, I do not see the devil's workshop. If you put your time into use, believe you me, you're not going to have time to be thinking if your husband is at work or your husband went to Jericho and came back. You're going to be busy trying to do what you are doing. Busy finding solutions to your problems. Busy putting things in place to make sure that the things that you put in place are actually working. And there is something else. By the time your husband comes, you jump on his phone, you pick his phone. When your husband is sleeping, you are struggling to pick his phone to find out if he communicated with which lady today. My dear, you don't have something important to do with your time. So let me say, for example, you pick up his phone and you saw a conversation between him and a girl and probably professing his love to that girl. What are you going to do? I just want to understand, what are you going to do? Sometimes it is better to live in ignorance and be happy than to be trailing your husband, finding out things that will bring only you trouble. If you see a conversation with a lady, you are struggling to pick up his phone. What are you going to do? That is a question I'm asking because it's a question that I've not had an answer to. What are you going to do? Are you going to walk out of that relationship? To go and find a man that was fabricated for her from heaven? Who is not going to talk to any other woman? Or are you going to start fighting? Are you going to start stressing? Feeling depressed? 
and attracting health problems because you went and looked for problems. Please let us not be the naggy wife or the naggy girlfriend. Because if everything you do is to ask questions, to fight problems, believe you me, that relationship is on sandy soil. It cannot work. It cannot work. We are not saying that it is right for the men to go out there and have problems. But we are saying that the fact that we are married doesn't make somebody... I don't want to say subordinate. It doesn't... It gives... The fact that we are married doesn't stop you from having your own independence. Everybody has an identity. Everybody has their independence. Everybody has a right to live their life. Can we just give them an opportunity to live, to be who they are? Can we just give them an opportunity? We have to give them an opportunity to be who they are, to live, to be free. Sometimes when you let go, when you leave them, believe you me, they don't do anything. They don't. When he comes home and you're like, oh, honey, welcome. How are you doing today? How was work today? Any stress? What happened? You can discuss with him the things that went wrong in the office and sometimes give him solution to those problems. That is why you are a partner. Together, our men are like that. They, sometimes they don't think. Women are those who think. They always have solution to all the complicated problems that are on planet Earth. If he comes back from home with a complicated issue from work, and you talk with him and you tell him, no, you should do like this and do like this and find solutions. Your husband will leave work and all he thinks of is to come home to meet his wife. But if he comes home and by the time he puts his back down, you are quarreling and fighting. When he leaves work, you'll be hanging out with friends because he doesn't, go, he, want, he doesn't want to go back home to a boring or a naggy wife. When you get married, there is an understanding between you two. There is respect, mutual respect between you two. There is mutual trust between you two. If there is no respect and there is no trust, then there is no relationship. The reason why you want to find every little thing, get into his emails, get into his phone, find out who called him, call his friends to find out who he was with, Yesterday, what did he do? Is lack of trust. And if there is no trust, the relationship is not worthy. So we have to develop trust in our relationship. I know that not everybody agrees with me. That's why we are talking. Everybody's points are different. But from my own understanding, that is my advice that I'm giving to women. Because we face these challenges on a day-to-day -day basis. I am talking because I know women who have had put themselves in very difficult situations because they went to find out their husband lives said, I'm going to work. You are following him from behind. You pay people, put people out there to find out what he's doing, when and how, who did he, who did he talk to, and who gave him what. My dear, you, be, you have become an FBI behind somebody. Because he's married to you. Before that man got married to you, he had friends. He has classmates. He has colleagues. He has gone through so many years of life with ex different kind of experiences before meeting you. He is not all of a sudden becoming going to become an island because he met you. He greets his classmates as a friend. He smiles with a woman is a problem. He talks with a woman is a problem. So I was trying to look at those things because most often than not, we blame the men. The marriages have gone up, marriages have gone down. We blame them sometimes, but sometimes we have to look at ourselves, stand in the mirror and look at yourself and be honest to yourself and ask some questions. What have I done? What is the part that I've played to make this relationship work? What we are saying is that if you are convinced that you have done everything that you're supposed to do, and the relationship did not work, you're going to give yourself a tap on the back and say, I tried. 
and it didn't work and you're walking out of that place with pride joy nobody tells you to go and stay in a relationship and die in a relationship that does not have you know yes adeline said that who finds who 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 you who finds out is just looking for stress on yourself exactly why are you why are you looking for stress why are you finding out why must you go out there must you follow him up before this man met you the man knows all the women that he's talking to today i mean greeting and everything he had known all of them and he chose you for a wife is that not reason enough for you to trust him he could have chose all any other woman he chose you because he found something in you he loved you so much to decide that you become a life partner but when you come to the house and married and you start putting things apart that is just one of the things don't stress them up secondly the day your man met you maybe the time that he met you and you were dating him you were this classy girl you know every time you were up and doing you he comes home you're looking good you're going out with him you're well dressed everything was classy about you you were neat the house is clean food was well prepared everything was good the moment you get married to him he wants to come home you they will cover from morning to night you have not taken a shower your hair is scattered you are sweating in the kitchen you start wearing slippers everywhere you're going because you are married my dear sister you're going to turn off that man the fact that we are married is not an excuse it's not an excuse for us to forget about taking care of ourselves we are not taking care of ourselves because we want to look for a man because when you do that the impression is that you were looking for a man and now you have a man you don't need to take care of yourself no you're taking care of yourself for you it is for your own good it is for your own good and for your own happiness it's for your own joy and for your own self-satisfaction that you are doing you're taking care of yourself you're looking good you're not looking good for any man it's for you so if you're looking good for you what stops you from taking care of you god gave you this beautiful body to take care of dress good look good look smart look happy so that when he comes back home too he looks at you and he's like oh wow i have a beautiful wife It's not like when he comes, you are there sweating in the kitchen, sweating. See, when you sweat with Kaba, you don't put your book, put on table, you are sweating. The day that he's going to go out there and meet a girl who is classy, clean, organized, he's going to forget about you, my dear sister. And you start complaining. These are the things that we talk about, our, we talk amongst ourselves. It's not like we we are we are it's not like we are trying to 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 blame somebody or apportion blame. We are just talking these things amongst ourselves so that we can help to improve our relationships. We can help to be happy. Because sometimes we can try to be happy. Because sometimes, when we become stressed, we are not happy. When we become depressed, we are not happy. And guess what? We are, we are losing so many years of our lives. Because we are stressed and we are not happy. We are killing ourselves gradually. And we don't need to. And the answers are within us. We can make things better. We can make things better. We can make ourselves happy. Make our environment happy. Make our home a conducive place to live in. So that you'll be jubilee, you, that is, you'll be vibrant and looking healthy and happier. And the happier you are, the more years you're adding to your lifespan. 
So please let us not look for artificial problems because the problems are already there. Life is full of challenges. Life is full of difficulties. Please let us handle the natural ones that we don't have any control over. Let us not go and invite more problems into our lives. Let's try to avoid that. And you know, the next thing I want to talk about is if you hear that your boyfriend, your husband, or your, your husband has a girlfriend, what do you think you should do? Go and fight. Yeah, because some girls, when you hear that, oh, my, my, my husband has a girlfriend, you go and wear your pants and you go to that lady's house and you're going to fight, you meet her on the street, you're insulting her, you're fighting with her, you're doing... I, I don't, to me, I don't think that is the right approach. Because you know what? That girl who is going out with your husband has defined herself. When you go and start fighting with her or quarreling on the street, you make yourself mean. You don't have to do that. If there are any scores to settle, settle with your husband in the house. You don't have any reason to go and fight with her. Not to talk of going into her house to go and fight with her because she will never come to your place. If you have any scores to settle, settle those scores with your husband. Settle the scores with your husband. Because that is where the answer lies. And review yourself, review your life. Look at your life. Look at your, your role as a wife. Ask yourself, am I doing what I'm supposed to do as a wife? Am I meeting up to the expectations? That are required of me as a wife? Look at it. Is there anything that I'm doing that is pushing my man outside? Look at those things and address them. Because the more you go fighting, the more the man is going. He's not coming back to you. The more you become violent, the more you're losing him. He's not coming back to you. Any right-thinking man is not coming back to you. So these are some of the challenges that we have. And sometimes we don't know what to do. We don't know who to talk to. We don't know what approach to take. But these are common occurrences in relationships. Do not be too bossy in a relationship. Even if you are a boss at your workplace. That boss, that boss title ends at the workplace. Don't go to your home and become try to become bossy because you are the boss in your office. No, it doesn't work. Your role as a boss in the office is different from your role as a wife. Don't try to have everything under control. Every decision you have to take. Everybody has to listen to you. You want him to become a stooge. When, so when you ask him to sit down, he sits. When you ask him to stand up, he stands. It doesn't work like that. Don't be bossy. Promote communication between you and your spouse or you and your partner. Promote communication. Create an environment that is conducive for the two of you to be able to communicate. Communication is the key to every successful relationship. Instead of being bossy, communicate with him. Share your ideas with him. Ask his opinion. Ask his opinion. Ask him what he's supposed to do and what he's not supposed to do. Ask him, what do you think about this thing? I was thinking that if we do this and do this and do this, it's going to be like this and it's going to be like this, it's going to be like this. What do you think? Sometimes he is... Just because you say, what do you think, doesn't mean that he's going to change what you're saying. But he feels important because you know what? Men love to be respected. If you are a barrister and you get married to a truck pusher, believe you me, you're going to respect an African man. You're going to respect him. If there is no respect, give him everything. Give him all the money. If there is no respect, that relationship is not working. 
So you need to discuss with him. Yes, Adeline says wives just need to make the best out of themselves and their husbands will be all theirs. That's just what she said. Then if you make the best out of yourself, your husband will be all yours. So instead of trying to look at his faults and trying to criticize him for everything that he does, trying to look at you and trying to make you a better person. If you try to make yourself a better person and make yourself a better person, your husband is going to be all yours. But if you spend time criticizing him, why did he stand? Why did he sit down? Um, why, why did he do this? Why did he do this? Everything is a problem. He says something is a problem. He doesn't say something is a problem. He laughs is a problem. He cries is a problem. No, it's not going to work. Just make the best out of you and your money is going to be yours. So instead of spending valuable time trying to spy on him, spend that time trying to rebuild yourself. Look at the review your life. Look at you stand in front of the mirror and look at yourself and talk to yourself. What is it that I'm doing wrong? Be honest to yourself because sometimes we, we refuse to be honest to ourselves. Be honest to yourself. What am I doing wrong? How do I need to correct this? Correct it. Work on you. And believe you me. You will see your husband becoming the person that you have long wanted him to become. So those are just some of the things that I wanted us to talk about today. And just that we build ourselves. Just that we fortify ourselves. Just to encourage some woman today. That if you are in your home and you are undergoing all of these challenges, look at you. Find out where the problem is with you. Find out what you think you are not doing right. And try to make yourself a better person. Trying to correct your wrongs. And be a better version of you. Some of those challenges are going, we are going to overcome them. Because I know that many of us are going through all of these challenges. I know that friends, the something that you also need to think about seriously. Is that as a married woman, even if you are not married in a relationship, please do not discuss your husband or your boyfriend to your family and friends. Do not. Do not talk about the challenges that you're facing in your marriage to your friends and to your friends and family members. Because when you talk to your family members, believe you me, they will never forgive that man. If you tell your mother or your sister that a man maltreated you, she is going to carry it for life. But you are going to forgive him because he's going to come to you and tell her, sweetheart, honey, please forgive me, the devil. You know, the devil is always influencing men. So he's going to tell you, sweetheart, please forgive me, it's the devil, the devil's work. Please, I will not do it again, you're going to forgive him. But your family will never forgive him. They will never forgive him. And don't talk about him to your friends. Because you have to choose your friends wisely, though. So when I talk about friends, I'm talking about those whom you cannot really call a friend. Because when you start talking about them, sometimes you tell your friends about all the good things that your husband is doing to you. Oh, my husband is very respectful. Oh, my husband is very loving. Oh, my husband worships me. He gives me. Oh, my husband just bought me a car. Oh, my husband bought me a nice ring. Your friend starts developing an interest in your husband because she also wants to get those things that you get. You are the one who is instilling that in your friend and you didn't even know. And by the time you know it, your friend is making advances to your husband. By the time you know it, your friend is going out with your husband 
until it gets to a point somewhere that you cannot even have control over it. And if you want to talk, the man is going to tell you she's she's more beautiful than you. She's more caring. She's more understanding. She does this. She does this. You, you are only here nagging, nagging, nagging. Why would I not go out? And then you stand there and look at yourself like a fool. So please know what to say. Your relationship is not a community project. A relationship is between you and your boyfriend or you and your husband. Handle the challenges as best as you can. Where you think that you cannot handle the challenges or you think that you have done the best you can and you cannot, you can seek the help of a counselor or you can seek the help of a pastor. Don't go to your friends. Because you go and tell your friends that hey, my, my husband did it. Hey! Hmm. And when you're still doing what there, if I'm the one I would have left a long time ago, I cannot tolerate that from any man. Nonsense. By the time you know you're out of your home or before you finish that your friend is in that house. And you want to talk to her, I did not send him out of the house. You say you don't want him anymore. But you don't want him and I want him. What is the problem? So don't let people to decide how you run your relationship or how you manage your relationship. Decide how you manage your relationship. It's not your friend who is going to tell you how you're going to run your relationship. No. So we have to be also careful because some of the things that we do in ignorance and we just think that, oh, we're talking, or I'm just praising my husband to my friend. Or I'm just complaining about him to my friend. You think that you're, you're just doing it in ignorance. You're doing it thinking that you want somebody to advise you. And you're thinking that that friend that you're confiding in is somebody who can give you good advice. But believe you me, the hearts, the thoughts of a man are not triable. You may never know what is going through her mind. And by the time you finish talking, she will give you the worst advice that you have ever had on planet Earth. Robbie, my own husband does this. My husband does this. In short, my husband cannot talk to me like that. No, he cannot. I'm out of that place. Me. Me. No, I cannot tolerate it. Now, now you, I beg, if I'm you, I cannot take it. And then you go to your home, you're boiling because your friend has told you that she cannot take it. And you go and put more kerosene on fire. Please, be watchful. To who you talk to. Especially when it comes to your relationship. When we do those little things. We are able to fix our relationships. We are able to live happily. Because emotional stress is one of the worst things that can happen to somebody. Emotional stress. It's going to kill you very fast. So if you have the power within you. To control emotional stress my beloved sisters do everything within your capacity to control it everything within your capacity do it to control it so that you can be free you can be happy you can live longer and you should be able to take care of the children that god has blessed you with And we can only do that if we take care of ourselves. So if you stop looking into your husband's phone, you are taking care of your emotional health. If you stop trailing him wherever he goes to, you are taking care of your emotional health. You are not doing it for him. If you start picking his phone to read every message that he sends out, you are doing it for your emotional stability. If you start, stop asking him, where were you? How were you? You are doing it for your emotional stability. So please, for your sake, do those things that you're supposed to do to make yourself a comfortable, make your home 
a comfortable home and do yourself some justice. So my message today is that for all the things that you are doing, you are not doing it for the man. You are not doing it because you are afraid of him. You are not doing it because you're begging him. You're doing it for your own emotional stability and you for your own health. You want to live long. You want to live happier and you love yourself so much. If you love yourself so much, you can go through every challenge to make yourself happy. And this is just one of them. Nothing can stop you. So let's do that and be happy. So that we can, together as women, build a brighter tomorrow. We can instill some values in our children. Because we are the mirror through which our children see the world. So let us instill these values in them. So that they can also grow up and be able to live happily in their own relationship based on what they learned from you and this world is going to be a better place you're going to be giving yourself long life giving your children long life happiness joy peace and love so thank you for watching share this video to as many people as possible please don't hesitate to share share in all the groups that you know so that those who are not opportune to follow up today. Thank you. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love, Adeline. Thank you. For those who are not opportune to follow up today. I know I've been very absent and I didn't send out my invite early. To notify my fans that I'm on and I'm back. Share. So that we can gain some knowledge. And we can learn together on how to help ourselves but do not hesitate if you have anything to add or any suggestions to make because this platform is a platform where we intend to work with women help women help us solve our problems help just counsel us and find ways to become happy and successful women in the society if you have any contributions Please do not hesitate to inbox me and I'll be very happy to share them when I come back live. I will be back on Saturday 3 p.m. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all and have a blessed evening.